The Oxford Project, I remember at the very beginning. I remember Peter talking about it to me. I remember he was pretty excited, but I remember he didn't think, he wasn't sure it was going to work or what it was going to end up being. Uh, now the book is out, and the book is two run-throughs of Oxford. It's Oxford 20 years ago, Oxford now. And some of the people look the same, some of the people don't look the same at all. You, you, could put, you could trade pictures with some of them. It's a lovely, lovely book. If you're from a small town in Iowa, the book is about you. It's about every one of you. For me, it's, a, uh, it's, it's my community. In Oxford, if you, if you haven't lived there 25 or 30 years, you're not really part of the community. Um, and unless you have kids, and, and I don't have kids, but if you have kids, of course, then through the school you get, you get, you you're in it. But from my point of view, uh, I was not really part of the community, uh, and I was always thought of as I thought of as an outsider. But doing this project made me much more of an insider, and because I got to know more people than most people in Oxford knew. Uh, and uh, so did you do it for that purpose? Yeah, in a way, yes. I mean, that's part of it. It was an uh, integrating. My my work has always been about uh, um, finding my finding my roots or my place within my community. Now I'm not a stranger. I think I'm much more part of the community because of how many people I know, how many people I know who were little kids when we start when I started this project, and then um, you know now they're adults with their with kids of their own. So. Um, you know, I'm much more part of that community. My, my jaw dropped when I saw these photos. 22 years apart, 1984, uh, 2006, and, and I thought they said everything. They talked about time, they talked about uh, just the ravages of time, but also the, the, uh, the jubilation of, of, um, of teenagers who are skittish and awkward who suddenly, after 22 years, become um, proud and secure and assured with their position in life. And so Peter, I said, this is terrific, Peter. And Peter said, yeah, but they got stories to tell. So you need to listen to their stories and record their stories. And thus, for me, began the Oxford Project. We, you know, we met a guy, uh, Tim Hennis, who had his whole life planned out. He, he grew up in Oxford. His father grew up in Oxford. His grandfather grew up grandfather. in Oxford, Doc Ennis. And he, he just wanted so badly to go to Hawaii and live out the rest of his life. And he saved money for the flight to Hawaii. He was going to buy a one-way plane ticket. He had a, when he graduated from high school, had a temporary job, summer job, working for the, the county of Iowa City. On the way back home, he stopped off at Slim's for a, a beer. beer. But he wasn't 21. Okay, that's another story. <laughs> and there he meets the love of his life, and he stays in Oxford for the rest of his life. I wanted as little of me in the photograph as I could. I wanted it to be about the people. So basically, all I did was set up the camera and the lights and the backdrop, and they would step into the view of the camera. I would focus it, and, and that would take their picture, just one at the first time. And, and Steve brought a very similar kind of attitude to the other, to the uh, interviewing process. And he might want to say more about that. Well, I've been doing journalism for a long time. I've never gotten decked. No one has ever said, that's none of your goddamn business. <laughs> so I just asked some very personal questions that perhaps Peter himself might not have asked, because he lives in that community. 18 miles away, I, was, I, I, I had a little bit of an advantage. So some of the questions I asked were, um, were you ever in love with your husband? How did you know he was the guy for you? What happens after you die? Um, what do you really think about this community? And I was rewarded almost like a confessor with uh, things that blew me away. People did talk about hell and heaven and purgatory. People did talk about um, how they met their spouses and how their world changed that day, how their lives could change on a dime. Um, to me, it becomes really a revelation, not about Oxford per se, 
but about life anywhere, whether, li whether it's going to be life in New York, Chicago, in a tiny little town, in the steppes of Russia. It didn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. This is really the human condition, and people opened up mm -hmm. and, and shared the kinds of things that they don't ordinarily talk to their husbands and wives and children and mothers and fathers about. There's a sense of a freedom when you talk to a stranger. I can't really explain it more than that. Mm -hmm. You've nailed them, and you've nailed them by doing the right thing, letting them nail themselves, letting them tell you who they are. And the book itself is just a stunning book of photography that is more than a book of photography. <laughs>